Well, the coalition is accusing Labor and the crossbench of making a grubby political deal by expanding the powerful Intelligence Parliamentary Committee. This would, for the first time, allow politicians from outside the two main political parties to receive classified briefings from our intelligence agencies. The Deputy Chair of the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Intelligence and Security, Liberal MP, Andrew Wallace, joins me now. Andrew, thank you for your time. Now, committee members from this powerful intelligence committee have traditionally only come from the major parties. This is a powerful committee. The members do receive classified briefings from the intelligence agencies. Why are you so concerned and why do you think Labor wants to add members of the crossbench to this committee? Well, Shari, thanks for having me on. I'm very concerned, and as is my colleagues uh, from the opposition, that this is some sort of grubby deal has been done between the government and the crossbench. Now, there was absolutely no consultation or very limited consultation between the government and stakeholders. They gave stakeholders five business days to respond and we received a number of complaints and rightly so from stakeholders about the very short time frames the government rammed this inquiry through with very little consultation uh, very little uh, time for us to do our important work and then uh, when the report was was finished they they released it at uh, four o'clock on a friday afternoon as the saying goes they, they were hoping that it would be taken out with the trash. But so why under do you the cover think of Labor darkness. does want. What has Labor said to you about why it does want to add two members of the crossbench to the intelligence committee? Well, look, Labor still haven't been upfront with the Australian community about this. They've said, "Oh, we want to add two members to the committee from 11 to 13 because they think that the committee has been overworked," and yet they provide uh, significantly. Uh, reduced timeframes in which for us to do our work. Our concern is that this is all a bit too cute, that some deal has been done for the, the, the passing of legislation, either as a reward or as an inducement to come for a crossbencher or crossbenchers to be serving on this committee. And, and so, now, Andrew, what's the concern here, that this could lead to leaking of classified information? Is, is that the main concern? Well, there are a number of concerns, Shari. Uh, Mike Burgess, the Director of Intelligence and Security, has rightly pointed out to the committee that the more people on this committee, the greater the risk of, uh, of secrets being uh, let out, well, either intentionally or inadvertently. And we've seen that in the United States recently. So it's very important that we keep this committee tight, as, as we've always done since it was formed in 1988. The other thing is that these reforms effectively enable uh, under the strict wording of them, to for the government to hold nine seats uh, out of a committee of 13. Now, of the four seats that could be held by non-government members, the government could appoint all of those to the crossbench if it so cho chose. There's nothing to say in the legislation or the draft legislation that enables the opposition to have any seats on the committee. So what that could potentially do is it create could create a a, 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 a sort of a brain drain or a, a desert mm. for opposition members who ultimately yeah. have to be able to be in a position to be able to form government at a later stage and then go on and do yeah. important work either as a committee or, or ministers. And Andrew, do you think there's a concern that the United States or our other Five Eyes partners, and this is part of the intelligence sharing arrangement, do you think they might not feel comfortable dealing with the committee now? Well, look, um, that 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 could happen. I'm not saying that it would happen, but but certainly we are uh, one of the members of the Five Eyes countries, and uh, uh, you know if if this could create a chilling effect, perhaps. But uh, it's not something that, that that I'm suggesting, but it is a possibility. All right. Look, I want to just ask you about another topic before we go. There's momentum growing for a ban on sports betting advertising during broadcasted games in a bid to crack down on gambling. This is something that Peter Dutton floated in his budget reply speech last week on Thursday night. It's received the support um, from different sides of politics. Uh, Albanese says an advertising review is underway. Where do you lie on betting adverts during games? Um, and, and, you know, where, where does it end if you start banning more and more 
areas from being from from advertising during sporting matches you know where would you draw the line well sherry i'm a very very firm believer that uh the, the gambling advertising that we're seeing, particularly in uh, sports betting, has, is beyond the pale. Uh, I receive multiple complaints uh, after every grand final of NRL and AFL from particularly mums uh, ringing my office with great concerns. And look, I, I absolutely believe that uh, the gambling companies are trying to effectively take over sport. Young people are unable to differentiate now between sport and gambling, and I think that that is a tragedy. Uh, we, uh, as a nation, we decided that we would no longer allow uh, tobacco advertising, and I think that this is something that we should be doing progressively. All right. Uh, and that's, that's an ultimate goal. I think it's a good ultimate goal.